This is part 2 of your section C electromagnetism tutorial and here we'll be picking up from where we left off in the last one that is electromagnetic induction. So here it was actually Faraday who conducted these experiments and he put forward his theory and what he said was uh, largely related to flux. Now, flux is, uh, you know that every magnet will have magnetic field lines around it like is shown over here as well, you can see the, the yellow lines and the blue lines here. Those are the magnetic lines. Now flux is, the magnetic flux is how, how many lines does this conductor over here, the white conductor, cut over here. You can see in this video, uh, the, the magnetic flux has been depicted in a blue color. You can see it increasing, it becomes five, then three, then as the magnet moves away, it's one over here. Then again, when you bring it closer, well, you see the lines on the over here are the outer lines. They are not getting cut, so they are not magnetic flux. So what Faraday said was that whenever there is a rate, the whenever there's a change of magnetic flux that is linked with this uh, conductor over here only then will there be an induced EMF. If say, let's pause it here. Now there's only one line that is being cut. Say we just keep the magnet over here and let's not move anything right now. So what he said was that it doesn't matter whether there's one line of, whether, whether there's one magnetic field line being cut or there's a thousand. As long as there is no change in that number, there will be no induced EMF. And if you, uh, the factor that the magnitude of the EMF induced depends on is the rate of change, which means not only the change, but also the amount of time in which uh, that change of flux takes place. Uh, so this also means that if you, as long as you don't have any uh, relative motion between the conductor and the magnet, there will be no induced EMF. And by relative motion, we mean that uh, it literally means relative motion. If, uh, say, just imagine yourself as a magnet. Now, if the conductor is moving towards you or away from you, then there is relative motion. Now, uh, the only major difference between just motion, relative motion, would be, say, I have the conductor in my left hand and the magnet in my right hand and I'm moving them at the same time with the same speed in the same direction then even though uh, they both are moving there will be no induced EMF because the number of field lines that are being cut remains the same so relative motion between them is zero and you'll be doing more of relative motion next year but for now you should just know that as long as you know, that, that's a difference in the movement of the two. That's that's called, uh, th then there will be an induced EMF. So you can just imagine these field lines and uh, just uh, think about it that way as well. So uh, that's what Faraday said. And he said the magnitude of the EMF is directly proportional to the rate of change of the magnetic flux linked to the coil. So uh, now if you want to find out the direction in which the induced EMF takes place or is induced. Uh, the, the two things. First one is Lenz's law. Now Lenz's law is actually what I told you in the last tutorial. All this stuff about you know the the magnet moving away or going closer, everything about repelling and attracting. So Lenz's law, just to quote it, says that the direction of the induced EMF is such that it always tends to oppose the cause which produces it. Now, take that part by part. The last part says, oppose the cause which produces it. Now, the cause which produces it, uh, which produces the induced EMF, we're talking about the magnet over here. Now, the direction of induced EMF is such that it always tends to oppose the cause. Now, Opposed cause means that if the magnet is coming closer, it will try and oppose it, which means it'll try and oppose its motion. And by that I mean, if the magnet comes closer, it'll want it'll want it to go 
further away from it. And so it develops this north over here because then north and north will repel. It's basically what I told you uh, about attracting, repelling by using like charges or uh, separate charges. Uh, it's the same thing, just put a fancy words. So this is the way you should think about it. Uh, that if the magnet is coming towards with the north face, you develop a north face because then the north and north will repel. And if the magnet starts to move away, then your wire will want it to come closer. So it'll develop the opposite charge. So that's all it is. You can read more about it in your books. Uh, but that's all. That's the concept behind it. And then, of course, there's Fleming's right hand rule. Similar to left hand rule. In fact, it's nearly the same. There's one major difference, though, which I'll be telling you about. Now, I know these are not fingers and thumbs, but uh, I think you'll get the point. This is the thumb over here, the little one. This stands for motion of conductor. Your index finger, your forefinger over here, stands for magnetic field, so we'll denote it by B. While your middle finger stands for induced current. Now, if you compare this to the left hand rule, the major difference comes in what are we finding? In the left hand rule, we were providing a current and we are providing magnetic field and what we were getting was motion of conductor so we are trying to find where will the motion be but in this case in right hand rule we are giving the motion we are giving the mag magnetic field and finding induced current so that's it uh, that's also the difference between an AC generator and DC motor in AC generator you are giving it the motion it gives you current that's induced current in DC motor you give it the current and there will be motion due to Lorentz force. So um, that, that's all there is in Fleming's right hand rule and we'll be using this a lot more when uh, we see the working of an AC generator. I don't have too much time but I'm going to start off by showing you the animation on AC generator. So let's just open that. Okay. Here again, uh, this is the name of the video over here got from YouTube so you can go there if you want to see it properly you could see it over there so I'm just going to introduce you to this animation because I don't have so much time to start the working of it but what's given here is a horseshoe magnet again the red is the north green is the south you can tell because the blue arrows which are the magnetic field are pointing this way downwards so that means north is up south is down you have this conductor and you have two slip rings. They're called slip rings, not split rings or split ring combinator. That's only in DC motor. And uh, the important part you need to know is that in DC motor, those split rings uh, are called split because they have certain gaps in between them. That's the red part I was talking about in the, in the last uh, tutorial. And whenever those two are in contact with the circuit, the circuit breaks. Well, here there's nothing like that. If you see it, it's a whole ring. There's no gaps in it. So your current will be always going no matter what. And here this yellow uh, knob you see with a handle there, that's, uh, that's protruding out of this whole, uh, the whole system. And that's, that's a handle which is used to rotate it. In this video, you can see it's being rotated in the anti-clockwise direction. And here you can see the circuit is also here, and uh, the person who's made the video has also provided uh, a voltmeter animation here, which helps, uh, and also this graph here. It's the same thing really, but it's good he's he's put two separate ones. So um, I'm out of time in this one, and uh, I'll be continuing the working of this in the next one, but. Just in a few words to sum up what an AC generator is, it uses this concept of induction and uses a current which changes polarity, which is why it's called alternating current AC. And uh, it basically converts this rotational energy you're giving it over here and gives you back this AC current. So we'll be studying about how it works in the next video.